Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan the Duke. I'm uh, from Montreal, Canada. Uh, a lot of you asked me uh, if I could make a brief uh, video about uh, the wings and gondolas uh, weathering and what was my technique exactly? What was what was uh, what I was using to do the uh, the bulge on the the side of the gondolas and everything. So I'm going to give you a short video on my uh, technique that I used to do it. Uh, and at the beginning, I just want to tell everybody that I'm not a rivet counter, but I'm using as much as I can some reference to do numbering, uh, coloring, painting, whatever on my uh, models, usually. Uh, I'm using the uh, real picture archive.net. To, to get those information. Sometimes they may not be exactly what it is, but I try to be as close as I can when I'm doing it. Uh, that hobby is a hobby uh, for everybody. Some people are doing rivet counting, some not, and I'm one of those. So uh, I would like to get some respect about what I'm doing. <clears throat> I've seen some bad comments through the time uh, not on my page exactly, but on the, on two other page. So I just want to make that point a bit before I'm starting showing what I'm doing there. So first of all, we'll start with the ball. Using the a heat torch to uh, to uh, soften the plastic. When you, I'm going to use one of the models that I did previously. <clears throat> so this is an Atern. Uh, this is an Atern. Uh, gondolas that I did there. This one is not completely modified, but uh, if you can see other model that I did uh, to, earlier this week, I had some uh, angle uh, angle sheeting there on, on the head on the top of the gondola here. So I gotta show you, I'll show you that technique later. So first of all, uh, first of all, uh, when uh, I'm doing this, uh, I use a small uh, butane torch. And I think that's the best tool to use for. Don't use a heat gun. Don't use a lighter or a barbecue lighter. It's not. It's not a good uh, technique to use at all. Uh, <clears throat> this one, uh, when you start it up, you you turn the gas on and you start the torch, the torch, and you see the the, the flame there. It's uh, it heats a lot there. So if I put my hand there, I feel the heat pretty much. So that means when you use it, bulging there, you have to keep a, a distance, not much, two inches max, close to it. And when you're do, doing it, <coughs> you have to go a little piece at the time there. You do like three square, maybe two, and you use the tip of your finger. If you got some, uh, how you call that, the silicone tips that you put at the tips of your finger, you can push the uh, <clears throat> the bowl the, the the panel out between the ribs and make sure you don't overheat so you do a, a two second pass like when I pass into it I, I do one two three four that's it then you put your model against the table and you just push between the ribs you will see the ribs through the plastic a bit from inside so you put your finger you push a bit that much remove your finger because it, uh, it's hot you can use some uh, sharp thing like a, a little uh, vice or something like that uh, maybe you can use uh, your exacto blade a bit just to push out but not too much because remember the plastic will get softened Will, will, will get it will melt a bit not much but it's going to be soft enough to make a bulge on the, on the siding there so <clears throat> my technique it's you put your finger once you remove it you push it again and you feel the plastic getting harder a bit and don't push too hard at the same time because if you, it's against the table and you push the the, the, the panel siding will fly it out at the same height than the ribs so it's gonna make a bulge, but a flat bulge. And what you wanna create when you do the model, you want to make a round bulge, 
a bit. So that means the panel is embossed, but not the ribs that much. The ribs will go out, out a bit at the same time, but not much. But that's what you want to create when you do it. And the, the other thing too, it's when you overheat, make sure you, you keep the side panel open towards the exterior. Because usually when you put it all, a load inside, it's going to get overload a bit. And through the times, the panel goes out a bit. And, <clears throat> and also the, uh, the gondola will, will arch a bit too at the same time. So to create the arch, that's another thing there. Uh, I didn't de develop that technique that much. I know one of uh, my fellow uh, modelers, uh, Dan uh, and Neil Arnold, did, did it. <clears throat> he found a technique to do it. And I tried to follow his technique doing the bulge a bit. Not much. I did mine. And that's what I'm showing to you today, my technique. I don't say his is not good. His is good too. But there's many ways to do it. But like I say, each model could be different. The plastic, the thickness of the plastic could be different. This one, it's a, it's an atern, and most of my gondolas are atern. Some are Atlas too, and I did it on Atlas. The other one that I just showed you before was Atlas. So then I did the renumbering of the model. Uh, <clears throat> these were uh, X rail gun, uh, as you can see. So I renum renumber everything. I weathered the, the trucks. And I show you how I water the trucks at the same time there using which technique. I change the copper, the coupler, I install some uh, hair hoses underneath. Then uh, <clears throat> I install some grab uh, steps uh, underneath. I remove the plastic one and I put some metal one. These are the one from uh, uh, Walters when you buy a some of the, those are real car, they're gonna be uh, inside the box in a little plastic pouch where I, I keep them and I use them somewhere else at the same time. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you uh, my other technique there. So that was for the bulging. And I, like I say, don't overheat the plastic. You do one, two, three, four seconds, like four passes in about two seconds, Two seconds and a half, not much. You do two panels at the time. You push out with your finger a bit. It's going to be hot. So you need to have good finger. That's why I say if you got some silicone tips, use it and push it outward a bit. And it takes time. And at the end, you can heat up the, the end of the gondola and push it out a bit with your finger. And remember, it's hot still. So if you got some silicone... Uh, fingertip that you can use that be the best thing there. I don't know where to find these. I don't use it. But like I say, <clears throat> be careful about it. And using the torch is the same thing. These things, uh, the flame is that long. If you bend yourself, whatever, I burn my head once with it. So that's why I'm telling you. Okay, now I'm going to show you some aquas that I did uh, earlier last week. And I start to weathering them this morning using a special paint that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Same thing, these are Atlas. The plastic might be a bit thinner, so I went easier on the plastic. Same technique, I hate the panel, push out with my finger. That thing there, it's uh, it's hard to go in the bottom because inside there's a weight in, in the car. And uh, <clears throat> it's been very hard to me to, to make the bulge lower and with these Atlas, mainly impossible. So the number that I chose for that uh, rail car is CSXT 706226. But the, the, the type of the car is very similar, but it might be not exactly the same as the number on this because I could not find any reference. So I, again, for the rivet counter, I'm sorry, but I tried to follow the paint scheme of uh, CSX as much as, as I can. So when I modify on this car, I bought some uh, some styrene uh, evergreen scale model uh, 292 L angle pieces. That's a, a nice angle on it. It's like uh, 0 0.080 uh, inch thick. So it's very perfect for that. 
as I can see on the reference picture that I use on realpicture.net, uh, these are, uh, uh, CSX had some angle bar on the edge of the car there on the, on the top. So that's what I did from there and to there. It does, it doesn't do the whole car completely, the, the ribs, the, the top edge, it doesn't do the top edge completely. So it's very uh, random. So it could be a feet or two from the corner, that depends. So I play with it, I add some, and this is the result on it. It makes a thicker uh, edge, because it looks like those, uh, those uh, gondola are very hard, very easy, I mean, to, uh, to damage uh, in the real life. So that's why maybe CSX had those, so I did it. Uh, these Aquas car, they're uh, low grade uh, quality for the finishing. So the, the steps are uh, embossed in the plastic. It's not grab iron. <clears throat> so what I did, same thing. These were another real little name. So I paint those one all back. You see my picture uh, on my uh, Facebook page uh, a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> So the last week I painted them all black using a kind of grimy black. So it's not a real black, it's like fading black. Then uh, I use some uh, railroad wash uh, from AK Interactive. Uh, let me see, wash railroad. Watering effects from AK Interactive. That's one of the, the stuff, it's liquid. So you just apply on the on the side and you let it dry and it make a kind of brownish rusty finish as a wash so it's very perfect it removes the the brightness from the yellow lead ridge and it, it give a kind of rusty appearance over the lead ridge there so that's why i use that that product then i may go a bit with some pigment powder at the end finishing with some uh, uh, pigment fixture at the end but before that, as you can see, it's all spotted with some kind of paint on it. I made some dots and shit like that. Excuse my English about the, the, the thing there, but uh, <clears throat> then uh, I use an activate an activant product to activate the uh, the rust effect. And the product that I use uh, for to do the rust effect, and I show you one of the wheel that I did there. You see the wheel, it's starting to rust. I use that product there. It's an uh, iron metallic surfacer. It's from um, Triangle uh, Coating Incorporated. It's a Californian company from California. That bottle, is a, it's a 16 ounces bottle. It's about, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. It's about two pounds. The bottle weighs about two pounds. I paid about $75 US uh, back then to get these um, these two balls. And you got the uh, Russ and Tequing solution. That's a much more liquid product that you had after you put the paint on and you let it dry. You had this and it give you the rusty effect that you got in the bottom of the gondola. It's a bit too orange, let's say, or too pale, that depends. So that's why at the end you play with the uh, you play with the uh, the uh, the tone with the pigment powder. Then you so it's gonna came back a bit darker, but still rusty. So I have to play. And I do my truck. Same thing. You look at the truck. I did it. They're a bit a bit too much orange for the rust. So that's why I play with the pigment. I change the tone and it gives the finish that I got on some some of my car. Like the, these one that I did, you see my picture sometimes uh, going through the, 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 the side there. Puts much more light on it and you see the trucks. See one wheel is more, more pale than the other and I play with the tone like that. And that's one of the car that I did there uh, doing the rust put some pigment and I play and bring back the uh, darkness and the rust and uh, as the finish of the car. So that's pretty much uh, the way I do it. 
I'm a, I'm a visual guy, so I always play with picture reference and stuff like that, and that's why it gives uh, it gives some uh, good finishes. Right, so like I got three cars like this. They, they all Atlas, all the same, cheap quality, cheap quality, low grade the uh, Atlas, like the bottom, like like the uh, turn the roundhouse at sea. No steel grab iron, they all plastic molded in the plastic. So I just put some modifications. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have some KD copper on it. I may put the holes at the end too, and maybe change the, the the steps because I found them a bit too small. So I may, I might put bigger one there. So it's gonna be a, a long process, and I may put a load inside too. <clears throat> on my uh, my other uh, turn that, uh, that I did, you see that I had some residue in the bottom. Uh, I'm working in a trucking company and we do have a maintenance garage there and when they open some extendable trailers there's some a lot of rust so I picked up about two pounds of rust from the, the floor of the garage there and I put that in a bag and this is it I got little flakes from rust trailer rust so that's why you get different color the trailer that we got are red so the paint is fading and there's some rust through it, so you got the rusty uh, debris in there, and that's a gondola used to hold some metal, uh, scrap metal stuff. And it's good to make some really residue stuff and shit, uh, things like that, like that. So that's pretty much about it uh, for my technique. If you have any question, like I say, uh, the main uh, the main thing to retain about it, it's don't overheat your panel at all. You see, here's a CN that I did a few weeks ago. Uh, and I still uh, have a lot to do on it. That one, I scratched the ribs with a, an X-Acto blade. I may, may put some rust. I might play a bit more with the uh, pigment powder on this one. But the same thing, it's a... Uh, these one is... That one is a U-Bert uh, model railroad... Uh, Real car, there's not much weight on it. It's very light, so I'm gonna have to add some weight. I sag the, uh, I give a sag shape on it a bit. Uh, still gonna have to uh, make it rust a, a little bit, not much, but uh, so far so good. But like I say, same thing. I use the torch and I push the, those panel out with some sharp pieces in that one. You see the, the little, and that's the thing there when you use a sharp tools or something it, it leave it, it it left it leave it a kind of trace inside and it's uh, it's hard uh, to give a natural bulging look other than using your finger your finger will give a round shape inside but like I say you need to have good finger because it's up so you, you go fast and you remove your finger you may maybe deep your finger dip your finger in waters maybe before and just push out, dip in water, so you won't burn the tip of your finger with the hot plastic. And if you overheat the plastic too much, that's a warning that I give you. If you overheat the plastic, it's going to be like that. That one, uh, that one was a test that I did, and you're going to really put everything out of shape. Of shape. You're going to make the, the ribs going in the sh doing a snake shape. And it ain't good at all. So that one was a test. I'm still going to use it on my layout. Let's see. But that one was a test. It did work a bit. But like I say, I overheat. And if you overheat more than that, the plastic will make it a hole on, on the side panel. And then you won't be able to recover that, that thing at all. Because it's going to be too much deformation on the pieces. So. <clears throat> That's pretty much about it today uh, about my technique. If you have any question, don't be shy to uh, to write a question to write down a question on my post there, whatever the the um, the, the model uh, railroad page or group. I'm gonna post that video. Uh, Thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time. So again, uh, sorry about my accent. <laughs> I'm French-Canadian, but 
I try as I much uh, to be uh, to be good in English also. So thank you very much and have a good day.